Hi, I'm Larry Dignan with Constellation Research, and we're here with Joe Proda. He's director of brand marketing at IBM and a Supernova Award finalist. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Larry. Thanks for having me. So I guess let's just start at the top with the project. I know it involved Adobe, Adobe Firefly. I guess walk me through you know, some of the challenges you were trying to solve. Yeah, we, this was an effort to help educate the market on our AI products and what we do. And so we had targeted Adobe Summit, which is Adobe's largest event of the year in Las Vegas geared toward marketers. And we knew from all of our research that marketers had one thing on their mind, how can they scale AI to use their mark to help scale their marketing efforts? And how can they trust the things that it, AI is creating? And that was a perfect opportunity for us to communicate the governance capabilities of Watson X and how you partner it with Adobe. So we decided to take over the sphere in Las Vegas and turn it into a giant fishbowl. And within that fishbowl, we had all of these bizarre looking fish representing all the things that can go wrong with AI. And uh, one by one, they started to dissolve, representing what IBM's technology does, what Watson X does. And we landed on a simple message, trust what you create. Now, to develop this, we wanted to walk the walk. So we developed all of the assets that we use in the sphere and surrounding the event itself and inside the, inside the event, outside on other billboards throughout Las Vegas. We developed all of that work with Firefly. And as a result, we learned just how powerful and transformative using generative AI is in marketing. So how did you scale usage in terms of change management workflows and things like that? It was a very, so the creative development process is something that is not linear. It is twisting and turning and undulating to land on an idea and then to land on the final assets that you're going to put out into market is incredibly time consuming. So in this case, we had come up with the idea of trust what you create and, and kind of the fish. But if you think of each fish as a character, you have to define and develop those characters. And in a historical setting, someone, an art director or a copywriter, or someone within the creative team is going to either hand draw what they think those characters look like or pull reference imagery from a number of different sources. That's then gonna get presented up through management. It's gonna get refined. Then it'll come to, to across my desk and I'll have input on it. And that whole process can take anywhere from, let's call it three to four weeks. By using Adobe Firefly, that creative team was able to take what was in their mind's eye, prompt the AI, and suddenly they had hundreds of different reference image, images. So what would have normally taken three days, three weeks, we were able to achieve in three days. And that streamlined workflow largely due to time, or was it a case of, you know, did it boost creativity too? Both. That's a, that's a great question. So yeah, a, an enormous time savings, but from a creativity standpoint, because there was no gap between the person whose idea it was and the person who was reviewing the idea, it allowed us to move much faster and to have actually build on one another's ideas in a more productive and collaborative way than we normally have. Because the AI was absolutely representing what this person was trying to create. Okay. Were there any concerns going into this? Like, you know, IBM is not exactly, you know, new to AI. How did you think through the ethical AI standards, enterprise readiness, and, you know, just kind of those guardrails you need? We ran this as a pilot. And so we wanted to make sure that all of those, that all the things that you were talking about were in place. But because this was at the beginning of the creative development process, we knew we had time to catch it. So if the AI spit out a, you know, an abstract image of a fish that suddenly had, let's say, Microsoft's colors or Amazon's colors or something like that, we would be able to catch that before it went into market. Whereas if you're using AI on the back end of the process and you're sort of creating something like a banner or a social post or an email where it's a lot, you know, higher volume and then you're pushing it out quickly, That's there's more of a risk. So we sort of knew we had some safeguards built into place just by virtue of the way we were using the AI. And then we also made sure that as we were going through it, we were talking with our ethics council and we really used this as an opportunity to help build out and inform our point of view on using AI. But we had all of the right safeguards in place and it was a really eye-opening experience. And, and were those safeguards largely because where Firefly sat in the process? Yeah. Exactly. So okay. it was used as a, it was used as a tool to accelerate the creative development process versus 
generating the final product. Both are very viable ways of using Firefly. I think using it to accelerate the creative development process is probably a less worn path than using it to, to develop a large scale of assets and get them into market quickly. Okay. So in terms of best practices, why is that a less worn path? Well, I, I don't know that everybody has embraced using this to accelerate creative development. You know, okay. right now, when you think of marketing materials, there are certain mm -hmm. assets that are have a high volume and need to scale really quickly. And that can be really time consuming and labor intensive. So like I was mentioning before, emails, if you think about any organization, they're going to create different emails that are targeted to different customer groups. And the number of variations you have to create can start to get very, can get really, really large. So this is enter AI to develop these emails for you, to develop consistency in, in the imagery and the, the messaging and the color palette, all of these things that make a brand a brand. That's where you, most people are starting to apply AI. At the beginning of the process, what gets you to the way a brand looks, feels, sounds, what the core message is, that is a little bit of a different process. Like I was saying before, it twists and turns, it's hard to land on, it takes a lot of collaboration back and forth between creative teams and the business side. And sometimes AI hasn't necessarily been used in that upfront process yet. But because of what we were doing and the message we were creating, we challenged ourselves to do it and we learned so much and, and see it as a really invaluable tool now. Okay. How did you determine who had access to Firefly? Just the I mean, people that were just the people that were working on the project. Okay, so it wasn't like some blanket. I mean, because honestly, if, if I had Firefly at work, I'd just play with it all day. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just a fun toy. So it's just the people in that project. Yeah. Okay. What were your core KPIs? I guess in this case, right? Because you were playing with the sphere and you were rolling out creative assets for that. I, I guess how do you how do you look at it in terms of KPIs? For this one, we wanted to raise awareness of, you know, we wanted to increase our relevance with this particular audience, IBM's relevance. We wanted to raise awareness of this partnership. We wanted to raise awareness of IBM's AI capabilities. And overall, we wanted to raise awareness of, of our ability to integrate with other platforms and products. Those are kind of our, our more measured KPIs. The sort of soft metrics that we had were, did using generative AI in the creative development process provide a benefit to us? Or did it create, or did it slow things down? And that one was a home run. I mean, like, like I said before, it, it, you went from three, four weeks of development time to three days. It was incredible. And the handoff between different parties was so much more seamless because there was no there was no gap in knowledge. There was no sort of extrapolating what somebody was trying to make as different parties touched it. So that was great. And then all of the measured KPIs that I talked about, every one of those went up by an average of 17%, which was great. So we viewed this as a huge success. What what did you have to include in terms of inputs to you know ensure the Firefly produced assets were on brand? Like, the, did you have to feed it, you know, all your brand guidelines, or I guess what did you exactly put into it? We used we definitely gave it some of our we gave some brand guidelines we gave it some color palettes but because so all of those things were baked in but because the firefly was generating stamp static imagery and the final version of this needed to be rendered in 3d animation at an enormous scale to fit, fit on the sphere and other billboards throughout we were able to sort of human being had to get back involved in the process or should i say take over the creation of this at a certain point. So there was always a person involved in prompting the AI and generating the AI and sort of picking the different variations and permutations that were coming out of it and then refining from there. So those basic inputs that we provided ensured that we were never too far off course. But then once we got into needing to create the final assets that would go on the sphere or go on different billboards, a person got involved and that's where we were able to sort of fine tune anything from a brand perspective. Okay. So what'd you learn from this? And I guess, what would you tell other companies when it comes to, you know, implementing Firefly? I think that it is an absolute 
game changer and accelerator when it comes to the creative development process. When you are coming up with a big campaign or a big tagline or any sort of main message and first to market creative concept, Firefly should be used to help accelerate what you're trying to do in the ideation and embraced by both creative teams if you're working with an agency and partners so that you can see these different explorations and, and get to a final idea much faster. That's something I don't know that a lot of people are doing today, and I would highly recommend it because it was incredibly valuable for us. It allowed us to align on ideas, under, have a shared vision, and it accelerated the process. It was great. So that was a huge learning and, and something we're going to continue to repeat as we move forward. So it's ideation, and then it speeds up the iteration. Is that right? Roughly? Bingo. Okay. Nicely said. What's next? What's next? More, more of this. We're working on a couple of other concepts now where we're using Firefly and other, and some of our own homegrown AI tools to help accelerate our process. And, you know, we have some pretty exciting products and updates coming out in 2025 that we'll bring to market and we'll continue to use AI to help that process. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.